Hey, everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the missing one, Rich Stambolian. I'm the missing link. I'm the missing person. Where's Rich? You'll never find me. Rich is back in the studio. But uh, when, when I'm gone from here, you're, you'll never find me. I'll never find you when you leave. That's how it works. What's going on, man? Nothing, man. How you doing? All right, not bad. Yeah. You know, stressful week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think I, I even told anybody what happened after uh, we went out last week for my birthday. Yeah, you lost your mind. I lost my mind. You lost your mind. You were, your reaction to the day was one of the troops in Saving Private Ryan before they get to Normandy, and you're in the boat, and then you freak out. And then everybody's like, what's wrong with Andrew? <laughs> and he's like, I, I can't do this I no got, more. <laughs> I got sideswiped uh, in front of my house. You woman. weren't in the car. We were at a bar. We were at a bar. For your birthday. For my birthday. A lot of people at the bar for your birthday. You get a message that your car got sideswiped. And then like it was it was like you and Bob to the bat poles. Can I tell you? And you Buddy guys, Cop film, man. That's yeah. it, me and Bob as detectives. Uh huh. The best thing ever. He was already like a little deep. And so I I imagine that that yeah. car ride just being one no, big I drove. one big left turn. No, no, I drove the whole <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I I I flew. Uh, it was, it was not, so essentially long story short, this woman sideswiped my car, then demanded to give us $500. And I'm like, dude, you just wiped out the side of my car. <laughs> she demanded money from you. She demanded, no, she, she said, I'll give you 500, but that's it. But if you call the cops, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's pretty much. So we called the cops and she took off. My brother called the cops, took yeah. off. I chased her down, blocked her. I got her license and everything. Mm-hmm. Refused to give me her name and everything. We finally got her. Wow. Got her. Good for you. And you went to the precinct too, right? I went to the precinct. They came here. It was a whole thing. Whole thing. She does delivery for a company called, uh, I believe, rx to go Wow. I believe. I may, be, I may be wrong there. Did Bob carry you into the precinct like like the Pieta, like Pieta style? And you were like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it was. He, he carried me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, terrible, terrible day, but... How much is it going to cost to fix your car? Oh, like $6,000. Get it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Every, it's a brand new car. The car has 1,500 miles on it. Wow. So they got to swap out everything. Everything needs to go. That whole side. It was like from from from, from the Just, back to the front? No, the door, the fender, the lights, the bumper, because I'm take, doing full replacements. Did she take your mirror off? No, but she did hit the mirror, oh, too. So exactly. there's like a little thing on the mirror. So She must have been drinking. You know what? I accused her of it. Mm-hmm. I said, are you on pharmaceuticals? My exact words. And uh, she didn't speak any English, so she had no idea what I was saying. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, that was my day. She was like, are you Dr. Anthony Fauci? Hey, is it Anthony Fauci? (laughs) Put your mask on. Take your mask off. I don't know anymore. So, uh, yeah, so it was not a not a great birthday, but we are going to do a redo with everybody at the bar in a couple of weeks. So we'll plan that out. But Rich, how's your week? Uh, Not bad. Uh, Very busy. Very, very busy. It's like the world's opening up. And uh, everybody who's vaccinated is like, let's hang out, dude, which is great. And I love it. Um, you just don't want to see these people. No, 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 I do. I, I want to see my friends. But, you know, like a lot of stuff with the in-laws this week. So I got to be on my best behavior. Uh-oh. Were you a bad boy? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I just, uh, you like, just have a lot of stuff with the in-laws this not week. Not really. Like, yeah, we have like a lot. of It's like three family events this week and like, whatever, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Listen, I get it. I get it. Uh, A lot of wrestling to talk about. Last week, we broke some stories. This week, we broke some stories. So we're going to be going down this. Uh, If you... Where do you want to begin, Rich? Do you want to begin with the stories? Or do you want to go on the notes? Let's let's do the... You want to open with the news? Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll go into the notes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Are you ready? We're ready. Uh, AEW TV deal news. Uh, AEW Dynamite will be moved to TBS in 2022. AEW Rampage will premiere Friday, August 13th at 10 p.m. on TNT. Will also move Mm -hmm. to TBS in 2022. So why start the show on TNT is weird to me uh, in August. I guess because they want to keep okay. both the properties together. Sure. I would have started this thing on TBS and started a following on TBS. I think there's more to this than meets the eye, and I think there's going to be an ultimate plan. Apparently, AEW stands to make between 10 and $98 million on this deal. It's over $10 million. I believe when I asked, they mm-hmm. said it was between 10 and 20 Wow. Okay. So I don't know what that means. It could be, and I also heard it's 10 to 40 I also yeah. heard it's 10 
So I don't know the exact number, but it's yeah. over 10 million. I think honestly, like I know people or a lot of people are poo-pooing on this, but I feel like this is this is one of those things where I suspect that there's a lot more to it that's going to come out closer to when the move happens and like all the bigger stuff happens. Rampage. How do you like that name? I like the, ah, like, you know what I think of hmm. the video game? Yeah, I think King of, Kong and Godzilla. I think of the fighter, the fighter Rampage Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you think? of? Yeah, I think he should host it. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's possible. Uh, so they're going to be moving. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, obviously, you know, if you look at the numbers for TBS and TNT, they're pretty much on par. They're in the same mm. amount of homes. Um, if you were to remove the NBA mm. on TNT, you would have lower viewership numbers and lower demo than TBS. Mm. So as a channel, it probably fits them better for their demo. Mm -hmm. However, you know, TNT is a bigger station than TBS. I, in my yeah. eyes, I don't know about you. I think they're about equal. Do you see them as equal? Uh, I think... TNT just because they have uh, basketball, you know, like I'm like, that's a station, but they got American dad and family guy on TNT, TBS, which is great. You know, I think, and, and Conan O'Brien, um, and a bunch of stuff, but I don't think it matters all, especially because like, they're so close on the dial. Are that uh, for you? Uh, well, I don't even know. I don't even have the dial. Oh yeah. Like, like they're, they're like for th you three channels apart on cable. Okay. So it's like you hit the guide and it's like, it's right. What there. channel is it on cable right now? I think it's eight. Channel 8. In, on Spectrum, I think it's 8, and TNT is 3. So it used to be... TNT always was 3, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you're right. 3 and 8 on, on Time Warner Cable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. So I I don't know. I'm digging it. I, I bet you it's going to... It's going to bring like a new audience and they're going to promote it. They're going to promote everything on both channels, though. I think that's the big thing, you know, and they're yeah. going to promote it on, on basketball and they're going to promote it during whatever they need to do. So yeah. uh, listen, uh, it's going to be fine. Uh, so here's the other thing, right? TNT is going to air. This all came out yesterday. TNT is yeah. going to air four supercar shows per year on TNT. AEW will air it on TNT. So these are going to be similar to like the specials that we've seen, like Blood and Guts and everything. Like this is their mm. uh, Clash of the Champions, right? Yeah. This is their Clash? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're going to do four specials, which is great because they mm. do need something else other than the four pay per views. Yeah. Well, you're going to have. Blood and Guts. You're going to okay. have Fight for the Fallen. Okay. Mm. And there was another one. That ba the did. Bash. The but bash. they called it something else, right? Didn't they call it something else? They called it Bumming at the Beach. Bumming at the Beach. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like the other whatever, one whatever like the summertime one is. And then something else. Something you know? else. Which is cool. All you right. know, like I'm, I'm really down with that. Yeah. Listen, I, I think that's fine too. I don't think that I have a problem with that. I, I think that TBS will be. Uh, TBS, I believe, is in just slightly a couple more homes. Mm -hmm uh but nothing i mean it's on par it really doesn't matter yeah it you know like you're getting it's from the same this is why this is why i'm saying like i think there's gonna be a lot more to this than meets the eye because clearly they're happy with aw very you know clearly, they're very happy like aw we said this a lot where they've over delivered in the last couple of years you know as far as like financially goes and getting like eyes on the product and like even like do you think here's a question for you since yeah. you're a numbers guy do you think tnt gave them the benefit of the doubt and were just like listen if you guys get like four hundred thousand people watching we'll be happy well kind of i i mean initially they it was it was they weren't getting paid for this like very little mm. and they were doing a rev split on the ads so people thought you know that's like in television that's never a great thing but because they outperformed so quickly mm -hmm. they immediately were locked to a contract they they renegotiated they got a ton more money yeah now they're getting even more money with another show on uh financially they are successful i i, I they are yeah. making money they are able to deliver the results to the ads to the advertisers mm -hmm. which has been a big positive for them they're hitting the key demo so yeah, you'll have weeks of fluctuation. Like the, tomorrow, last night, I don't expect it to be a great week because the main event wasn't this blockbuster. Like, do you mm -hmm. want? I don't think people were clamoring to see that main event, even though it was a really good main event. Yeah, I think, but I think that's kind of an interesting thing because I feel like that's one of those things where you know, like they had Darby main eventing for weeks, and apparently those numbers did like tremendous. They did good, yeah. You know? yeah. But we were saying, like you were saying. 
I don't know why they got this guy main eventing. You know, so it's very it's very interesting. We're like they're in the they're in a pocket that is a little bit undefinable for us as far as like our preferences go with wrestling. You know, yeah. um, I also think that between the two shows that are coming up, just knowing what I know about Tony Khan, I feel like he's gonna go old school, and you're gonna have what we talk about a lot. One champ, two shows. I hope so. Yeah, I know that there's more belts coming. Uh, they're going to be announcing a trios title soon. They're doing trios, five O's and four O's. Trios, five O's, <laughs> four O's, eight O's, octos, the octos. Uh, no, they're having a uh, trios title coming up soon. So it was supposed to happen at the Jericho Cruise. That obviously didn't happen. So I don't know if they're planning on doing it on the Jericho Cruise. But mm. you know, if you have a secondary product that's an hour show, I actually think it might do well at ten o'clock on Fridays. That could be another supercard show. It's a one hour show. The uh, the Jericho Cruise. Oh yeah, that is another one. That might be the you other know, special. Which would be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. You know, like I like the the way they shot a couple of those matches from a couple of years ago. Very well done. Very well done. It looked very entertaining. You know? Uh so I Yeah, do it. Be delicate. <sighs> I'm being very delicate. I can't say any more about AEW. Okay. About about the TV thing. But no. there's something there's cool stuff happening. Now there's here's a big question, and I'll leave this out here, right? Mm. Uh, they air their shows on BR Live. Mm -hmm. Do they need BR Live now since they have HBO Max being this this blockbuster service? That's an, a very interesting Because you're point. big on this. Yeah. You know a lot about the HBO Max and the, and the streaming it. providers. So Love it. I, Love where it. Do, you, do you think that that's the right direction for them to Absolutely, go? Absolutely, dude. Like, I think, I think we were all let down. I, I think I hyped it up in my head when uh, New Japan said that they're coming to something and they love purple. Yes, unfortunately, and it was Roku. It was Roku. Um, I think like having AEW and content on HBO Max is so the way to go. Like I'm a big fan. I'm. I was like, as soon as it dropped, I was texting everybody, like, "Yo, download HBO Max. It's awesome." You know. Yeah. But also because like I was grandfathered in because I've been a subscriber to HBO for like a million years. Yeah. You yeah. know. So it's like you get the apps for free. Um, I can totally see their content on HBO Max. I can see them do like an uh, like a categorical section with profiles of different guys. You well, know? isn't it isn't it the same as Peacock? Right, WWE being on Peacock, AEW being on HBO Max would be the equivalent of this. I think it's a little more. Again, this is from my own perspective. I think it's a little more prestigious, and I do feel like the HBO Max interface is a zillion times better. Oh than God, it, dude! I I've I started watching season one of The Sopranos again. Mm. Okay. So I, I think it we're getting we we're gotta get do, organized. We're, we're getting closer than ever. Very close to Matt Pranos. Matt Pranos is gonna happen. We're we're like almost there. But uh but I'm like, my God, it's so easy to navigate. It's so easy to find stuff on the service. Mm -hmm. Um Hold on. You okay? Sorry. <laughs> Did Peacock just, just message you? Peacock just Did messaged Tony me. Soprano said, just messaged no, 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 right now. You want me to read this? Yeah. Stop talking shit about us. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then he and then he sent the photo of himself, the peacock, the actual peacock, uh -oh. holding a gun up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought he sent a photo of himself, like you know, like that meme of that dude at the edge of the bed with like, yeah. the big schwan. <laughs> <laughs> my brother has that shirt. I mean, I mean, our intern, not my brother. I, I don't have a brother. Well, you have a brother and an intern. Yeah. Uh, TBS and TNT are nearly the same numbers in U.S. homes, according to Corey in our chat room. TNT cool. has eighty-one million, eighty-one point seven million. And TBS is 81.3 million. That's fascinating. Mm. USA is in more homes than TBS and TNT. Yeah. Who knows, man? That might, it might just be like, do you have TNT? Like when you had Fios, did you have TNT? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe one of those weird things, you know? Because I remember like back in the day, it was like, well, I don't get any of this stuff on Comcast. Oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah, don't yeah, don't live it. in Levittown. Don't, don't. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Can you move out of Smithtown? <laughs> uh, I uh, uh, go, going with the yeah. HBO Max thing. I think it would be a lot cooler. The interface is cool, and plus, like Warner, this is a thing that I'm really waiting for. That there's gonna be some kind of AEW DC Comics crossover. Oh my god, it's the same freaking universe, right? You so know? can we get Miro in Superman? Sure. <laughs> oh my god i want that so bad now i want him to be a magical villain and he just goes miro miro on the wall and then what happens he just oh you know what i got it you got it I, go ahead okay I, I got give it. it to me i want to get he it. does miro miro on the wall he's like uh, this m mystical bulgarian guy sure and when he does it he turns into lana 
Oh, that'd be great. Yep, that's his special power. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of stuff. I, I I'm sitting on some stuff on the AW stuff. I spoke to a friend of mine over at uh, Warner Media, and uh, there's a lot going on here. This is just the the beginning of this, but there's this there's mm. a little bit more to the story, and we're gonna find out in a couple months. I'm imagining, but as soon yeah. as I, I got the okay, we'll talk about some more. But this is this isn't just a this is a strategy for them. This is strategic. Sure. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of changes that are going to be coming to TBS. Uh, right now, they have MLB, mm-hmm. which is uh, going to affect them, obviously, during yeah. the playoffs when uh, baseball's, you know, when we're in October. Yeah. Uh, obviously, AEW is going to have to be preempted, but uh, it doesn't mean that they won't be on on Wednesdays. They could possibly do, you know, TNT for those days. And there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. They, they've... Yeah. This is this is a positive move. This is not a lateral move. Right. This is not a negative. This is po- very positive for them. So we'll see what happens here. Yeah. Helen Estelle announced. Uh, I put a teaser out uh, yeah. like two weeks ago, and I totally forgot to talk about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. I was told about Helen Estelle, and I put the Helen Estelle tweet, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll tease it today, and I'll talk about it in a couple days. Totally forgot that this thing was happening. June twentieth, Helen Estelle. Uh, but the big story here that uh we were able to break uh and i gotta tell you i sat on this for a while i told rich about this uh an mg geek and jonathan like a month ago but i just needed to confirm it and i I couldn't find anybody else to confirm it other than the one source uh and it looks like july 16th smackdown in front of a live audience russell votes tweeted interestingly enough today and liked our tweet uh that there's been a lot of pressure from the fox side to go sure. to a live audience. For sure, yeah. Tons of pressure because, guess what? I'm going to say this loosely, right? I mean this hmm. in the loosest way. Lose it up, And baby. I'm sure someone's going to quote me on this, but the pandemic's over, right? Mm-hmm. We're, we're, now, we're now in a different phase. I know. Can, can you? I'm telling you, someone's taking that quote, Somebody's right? Somebody's going to clip that. There's no pandemic. It was all lies. Oh, yeah, again, are you Dr. Fauci? <laughs> hey, it's me, Dr. Fauci. Hold on. You want to hear, hear my Dr. Fauci? Please. Hey, it's me, Dr. Fauci from Brooklyn. Listen, I live next door to Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> we all have the same vocal code. We all sound the same. It's the same town we're from. Uh, shockingly, they're from Greenwich, all of them. That's how they all speak in Greenwich. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that. That's how Vince really sounds. <laughs> One thing, Vince cannot say mirror. Did you know that? Mirror. 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 Look in the full length mirror. <laughs> sounds like my wife from Bensonhurst. Uh, July 16th, Smackdown. July 18th, the first pay-per-view back in front of a live audience outside of WrestleMania, obviously. Uh, Money in the Bank. And July Mm. 19th for Raw. I've heard some dates. I've heard some locations. Uh, Not dates. Locations. I I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Which it was. I heard like five different locations. So give me like a couple days and I'll post that. So the interesting thing, because it's tandem news almost in the same regard, where clearly TNT... Was like, listen, do what you guys got to do. If it works out, we'll give you more money. Don't worry about it. For the TNT side. As opposed to Fox, where they're like, yo, we invested heavily in you, and you are under-delivering, and uh, we need more. Now, let me say, in all fairness, I don't know if that was a discussion, but I think we Mm -hmm. could all assume that that's, you know. we we, Okay, guys, come on. Let's let's get this going. Let's get get rid of these LED screens. I don't got to stare at these peoples anymore. By the way, and I'm not... and, and this is this is based on Russell Votes's mm-hmm. message, which I got to tell you, uh, very credible guys. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's one guy, two guys. I don't know anything about them personally. Paul Heyman. Uh, can you imagine? I am convinced that it's somebody like real deep. It's not. I could tell you. Yeah. I, I could tell you for a fact. It's not someone really deep. So it's I, not I, Kevin Dunn. It is not anybody that you would know. Kevin Nash. It is it is a hundred percent Kevin uh the guy from King of Queens. Kevin James. Kevin James. <laughs> there you go. It's Kevin from the Wonder Years. It's Kevin it's Kevin it's Kevin Conley. Uh so w- I find this interesting, right? Mm-hmm. But here here's a conversation here's to add a little bit more to the Russell votes sure. tweet. Um it's not like Fox is screaming like have live have a live audience today. They're saying, "What's your plan, guys?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. we want to know what the plan is. And I know for a fact that there's been a lot of transparency now between WWE and the networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was told this by the WWE side of things. I've I've already 
I've I've been able to tell based on the communications, the line of communication. I'm being very careful here. I know, I know. I'm being very I'm sorry, guys. Uh but they they've been communicating more about what their plans are mm -hmm. with the networks. And the only reason for that is to appease them into thinking, hey guys, we got this. We know what we're doing. Not that they don't know what they're doing. I'm not I'm not accusing them of that, but they have been more open about communicating what the plans are, and that's what Fox is saying. Fox wants, you know, hey, guys, give us your game plan. We're, the summer's here. We're talking about arenas coming back. Vince's big thing has been he doesn't want to run half-ass arenas. Yeah, he wants the crowd. Because think about it. Think about the expense, mm -hmm. right? Like, I get it. WWE's making a ton of money, but you're going to run at 50% occupancy. You're going to travel. You're going to, let's say you're running New York, right? Because MSG's been discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not believe we're going to get SummerSlam in New York. Let me just say that. Ah, uh, I know. I saw a couple of things about that. All right. I, I know that a lot of people got excited about the garden. I, I know that we discussed the garden. I know that there has been communication. The only thing I have been told is that their goal is September for the garden. That's their goal. Which is cool. SummerSlam, maybe it was an open discussion to do something. Uh, you know, a lot could change till August. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> we also I, said that last year. I've also, I've, <laughs> yeah, I know. I've also heard something very interesting about SummerSlam and the date. Okay. Okay. The assumed date is the 22nd, August 22nd, which is a Sunday. Okay. I, I, it's still early. It could be a typo, but I am hearing a different day. Okay. Okay. A day that, that would surprise people. Hmm. In February August. 20th. For SummerSlam. <laughs> Are they going to Australia? <laughs> yeah, they're going They're going back in time mm -hmm. when we had 31 days in February. Do you remember those days? No. Back in the 80s. There were 31 days in February. I they don't just, remember that at you all. Know, listen, guys, this is all bullshit, okay? Life is all fake. This is Reality's not real. There used to be 31 days. 1986, they removed it along with the birds. Listen, it's... There the, are no birds. The Pentagon's got to release those UFO documents oh. at the, I think, June 1st, right? How excited am I for this? So, uh, I think both of us are super excited. But guys, I don't know if you know this. We're both super into aliens. I am. <laughs> Top three. Here we go. Top three alien races. I don't know. You ready? Uh, the Anunnaki is 100%. Uh -huh. The Norwegians. Yes. Th which are tall, mm. long, white, albino people. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, the classic race. The reptiles. The reptilians I'm not a fan of. Not, oh. What are, Don't what? care for the reptilians. Who's your, who's your favorite? Who's your third favorite? Anunnaki is my favorite. Anunnaki. Yeah. The, the, um, the Norwegians. The Norwegians. And the I'll Grays. go with the Greys. Like the classic. Classic alien Greys. Have you, have you heard the theory that the Greys might actually not be uh, biological life forms? That they're actually... Cyborgs? They, yeah, they're actually constructs. Oh. <gasps> and that's why that. they all look the same. Is that they're just like autonomous... And like they had no beings. peepees. No and peepees. The, and that the real aliens sent the greys out into the universe. So into it. So into it. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys, there is no... <laughs> I'm going to look dead in the camera and tell you this. There is no other show on the face of this fucking planet that you will get scoops on wrestling. Major business scoops. Uh, <laughs> uh, and alien talk along with poop humor. You're, you're not, you're not going to get that anywhere else. I'm so sorry. There was somebody that made me seem so credible on Reddit. Uh -huh. And I got to tell you, whoever this guy was that made this post, I, I, I really, I genuinely, it, you made me so happy by seeing that because it was very, it was a very nice comment about us. Yes. And it was like, hey, listen, these guys, they don't, they're not like journalists, but they tend to know a lot of people. And Andrew does this PR thing. Yeah. And he runs strip clubs. And that's one of his clients. And like, he knows a lot of people in business. So that's why he gets it. Deep knowledge. It was, that was his credibility. He wasn't like, yeah. oh, you know, Andrew, he has ties in journalism. He went to, you know, he went to this school. He went to that school. He went he to went the University to, of Phoenix. He, he graduated from the <laughs> University of Phoenix in journalism. Uh, no, you know, they're like, hey, listen, they're cool guys. They know people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'll take that compliment. Yeah, sure. That's awesome. It's an awesome compliment. Yeah. And uh, why not? I, so, think we, I think we built this show on just being like a little wild with. You know, not. By the way, uh, these are how all my business meetings run. I'm sure. All yeah. over the place. Yeah. They're all over the place. It ends up in aliens. We talk about wrestling, mm. aliens, Dogecoin. It's all you, over the place. You slam down old copies of Weekly World News and go, I'm telling you guys, Bat Boy's real. I'm you telling see you this? guys. George Bush has an alien kid. It's coming to life. Joe Biden's got a cyborg eye. That is true, actually. <laughs> That's why, they, that's why he called him Sleepy Joe. It wasn't that he was sleepy. It's the cyborg guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Listen, I there's a, there's a lot of moving parts, but I will say I'm very confident that uh, changes are going to start happening rapidly. So here's the other thing: Money in the Bank 
there's a reason why Money in the Bank is going to be in front of a live audience. You know, when they moved mm. it from June. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not... That's very strategic. There's yep. a point to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that point is, mm -hmm. but I was told that there is a reason for this. Um, any, anything else that I'm missing that I've, that I've kind of alluded to to you and MG Geek and as far as this news goes? I think you, without giving away what you told me before, I think you got everything. All right, I'm just I'm just going through my messages. Your here. personal notes. My personal, yeah, I do have personal your, notes. Your messages from Peacock. Uh, hey, buddy, take a powder. Stop talking about us. Hey, that that Peacock is no joke. All right, so if anything <laughs> comes to mind, uh, by the way, uh, Q and A at the end of the show, so you guys could ask and maybe revitalize some of my memories. Yeah, please. We yeah. got we got about uh 50 minutes or so. Yeah, 45 minutes. Oh, I forgot, Rich. Yeah. You reminded me. Hmm. The, the the other story that I have I have uh, I dropped. Uh, new sets coming soon. Uh, right now, they're working on the sets. Yeah, yeah. SmackDown is getting a new set. And so, I don't know if it's SmackDown or Raw, okay? All okay. I know is that they're working on new sets. So, I I, I assumed it was uh. also SmackDown when I was told they're working on new sets. So, it could be NXT, Raw, and SmackDown. I know for a fact, 100% it's going to be Raw. Raw is 100% getting a new set. Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming SmackDown as well if they're doing this whole thing because they're leaving their uh their incubation building <laughs> their incubator and they're going the bubble. they're going on the road the so wrestling bubble do you, all right let me ask you something do you are you excited by that or are you setting yourself up for disappointment by being excited for new sets i you know what i'm excited for anything new mm -hmm. that any anything that's different for them uh having a live audience obviously is going to change that show yeah and listen, dude, we were, you know, when they were in the performance center, you and I would have this conversation all the time that, you know, uh, it was it was dull. There was nothing special happening and, at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, Well, I found it interesting in the beginning of the pandemic how they did it. Yeah. I thought it was such a bizarre experience mm -hmm. to go through where it didn't affect me. But when they switched the camera angles and everything mm -hmm. and they tried to do it, they had the people on the outside. Then they removed them. Then you could see that stupid ceiling fan yeah. on the performance center that yeah, I yeah. hated. Um, I, I was told around that, ta that time that they were going to redo the whole set mm -hmm. and they did, but for NXC, they didn't do it for everybody else, which is cool that they have that building now in NXC that they can run. I have, I think they should run NXC out of there all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, with a few tweaks, I think absolutely more crowds, you know, more tiers uh, of, uh, something I'm done with LEDs, man. I'm done You're staring done at like the LED screens. It's just like it, a, it hurts my eyes and yeah. B it's like, it really takes me out of it with the piped in audio. So I'm looking at NXT right now, right? We're yeah. both seeing this. We're both looking what at it. You know what bothers me about this? What? The camera's crooked. Okay. And you're seeing some of that on NXT where mm -hmm. it's like kind of half-assed. Like, it's yeah, just like, like a little off kilter? That would never happen on Raw. Just no, 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 no. That would I, never happen but on that, Raw. But that's okay. You know, like, I think, that, like, we're watching the Johnny Gargano and uh, Austin Theory promo right now, you know? And this stuff is great. But you know what this needs? Live crowd. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, done with the LEDs. yeah, new so sets coming. I'm, it's not, you're, and everybody's question to me has been, and it's actually fascinating because this is unanimous on social media. Mm -hmm. Are we getting pay per view sets? And my answer is always the same. Whenever I've asked about this, they've said no, because the LEDs can morph into whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. You could have that set shift based on the LEDs, but, right, uh, possibly big four. Obviously, WrestleMania, we mm. got a new set, but Big Four, and uh, that's it. Well, Nothing that else. stuff, you know, when they would, would do the sets during the Attitude Era, it was only because they were, WWE was making such tremendous money, you know? Like, I'm, yeah. you know what I miss? I miss the backlash, the backlash hooks. Dude, that was a great set, huh? Such a great set. Yeah, phenomenal set. So, uh, new sets coming. I, I don't know when. Uh, I have no time frame on that. They're being constructed now. It may be at the end of construction, maybe in the beginning. I don't know. I know nothing about mm -hmm. it. Um, you want to go into the NXT releases, Rich? So uh, NXT an well, announced yesterday a lot of uh, people working in NXT in the Performance Center were let go, unfortunately. You had Vanessa Bourne, Jessamyn Duke, which I'm a little bit surprised by, uh, Ezra Judge, um, Jake Clemens, a ref, Randy Lauren, uh, Kavita Devi, Alexandra Wolf. His contract was up. Uh, I felt like I saw that writing on the wall when they were um for who that, like for alexander wolf when they were doing like that shift with yeah. imperium yeah and um your favorite drake works drake 
Listen, you know, you know what's the craziest part of this? We know it's the craziest part of this. I mean, a lot of it is crazy, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if he's. I don't like judging people based on stuff like this because, like, you don't know what they're going through sometimes. You know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. he obviously feels very, uh, very passionately mm-hmm. about saving the children, which I think everybody should feel very yes. passionately about all that stuff. Which, I, by the way, I'm afraid to say those words because we get demonetized. You already said that it's the complete end of, uh, you know, I'm not the, the universe. The, yeah. Yes, it is. It is the complete end of the universe. Um, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but not when somebody's just completely wrong and low cost. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> you know. I, honestly, I have not listened to anything because I'm not interested in hearing it. If so he, I've only seen bits and pieces. So if he... I know he had some issues in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he's going through something, I really hope that he's going to, you know... Sure. Like, I, I just don't like the shit pile on people. Like, Yeah, yeah. You have to be understanding and emphatic with people and all that stuff. Empathetic. If this was your company and somebody at your job and your manager was doing all this shit, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you also be like, "Listen, you got it. Tone this down. Tone it bit. down, guy. Come or, on, dude. That's the door. You know. Yeah. I. I don't. Listen. I have a very different approach to things. Like I'm very passionate about what I like, Aliens. what I where I stand. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I don't. I don't. Dude, I never discuss politics like that ever. I, right, I right, right. There's yeah. no like. Sometimes you know, like we're we're in a group chat, right? We'll post links and we'll make fun about stuff, and you can yeah. kind of understand where everybody falls in line. But I don't make this an identity of mine. Mm-hmm. I don't argue with people over this. Um, I, I whatever he's going through, if he's going through something, I don't know. Maybe he's just very passionate. And he's down this path. I don't mm-hmm. know anything about him. So I don't want to comment. I only comment on people that I understand and I know yeah. if they're you know. I'm sure the company kind of feels the same way. Like, okay, we get it. You're you're trying to do something positive, but maybe maybe take a different approach. I don't know. I I honestly, I, and then you look at it and you say like, well, Velveteen Dream still hired, you know, employed, yeah, employed. So if this was a firing due to that, mm-hmm. due to whatever he's been doing online, uh, I'm talking about Drake, yeah. Um, like, how do you how do you judge that this is this is bad, but that isn't? You know, I would imagine that an yeah. accusation like the one that Velveteen Dream had is far worse than, uh, you know, being being a little kooky and being a conspiracy theory mm-hmm. and constantly, you know, screaming about the kids being kidnapped and, and all this uh, conspiracy right. theories that I don't even want to mention the name because we got demonetized last time, which sucks that I can't even say it. But you guys know what we're talking about. You know what you were talking about. You guys so, know what we're talking about. Whatever, man. I, I don't know. They said, you know, when I reached out yesterday, they said all these all these. uh releases had, were budgetary reasons uh obviously you can see with jessamine duke they just tried multiple times she got injured didn't work out they mm-hmm. were going to do the four horsemen thing didn't work out vanessa Bourne, i'm surprised about because they were getting really she was i i could be wrong but she was considered i think most improved okay um as far as like in like their combines that they do okay. you know who's like the number one in their combines aj francis you shocked Oh. Simone Johnson. Oh, that's cool. She's like killing it with like the the workouts. That's cool. Well, I mean, genetically, I want to get jacked like The Rock. You should. You know what you got to do? And I wanted to shave her head and do the tattoo and do the whole thing. Oh, I thought you said you want to get jacked like The Rock. I do. Can you imagine me jacked like The Rock? I would love to see that. How ridiculous would I be? I would love to see I wanted to see like Hobbs and Shaw style Andrew where you're just a muscle. You're just like a th- into that. you're like a throbbing muscle, and that's it. Yeah, but you got to shave your head if you want. I'll do it. No, like if I ever rock. get jacked like The Rock, I got to shave my head. Yeah, uh, Brandy Lauren, I'm surprised about that they released her. Um, you know, I heard maybe some more to come. Some NXT UK talent. Yeah, well, it's that place is just in trouble. The whole UK scene, the whole UK, scene the whole UK, effing <laughs> hit last year. <laughs> Uh, and also, like as far as your politics go, I know you want a combination of the colonial wigs and the bull moose party. <laughs> but totally into it. <laughs> totally into it. That was a uh, Hoover's party, the bull moose party, right? <laughs> it was Teddy Roosevelt. Was it Roosevelt? It was Roosevelt. Yeah, it was Roosevelt. No, it was Roosevelt. <laughs> and there's a reason why he was. It was the bull moose party, right? And you have all these I like Ike signs all over the place. I like Ike. <laughs> I'm a big Eisenhower fan, man. Huge man. 
great wartime, you know, post wartime president had to do nothing. Mm -hmm. He just had to sit there and look like something. And then he just left. He's like, like, all right, right, it's been eight years. I got to go. The 50s are over. I'm out of (laughs) here. Oh, man. Uh, What else do we have, Rich? Uh, We got some news from the NJPW front. It looks like, unfortunately, Will Ospreay has gotten hurt. He's injured. Uh, He's going to be out with a neck injury. And he had to vacate the IW uh, GP title and go back to the UK for treatment. Um, I uh, New Japan is kind of in a state of flux right now <sighs> Man, with good. like the COVID stuff and also like just them canceling dates and then trying to and guys getting sick and left and right. So they're going to determine the title status at a later date. I do think they can go really, really big with this dude. Uh, I, you know what, this just happened too. Yeah, like yeah. a couple hours before we were doing the show, we, we saw this get posted. I, I feel terrible for him because, you know, this was kind of his, his crowning moment. He was really going to be the, uh, the guy here, uh, to kind of lead new Japan with, with a expansion again, you know, every time they attempt mm-hmm. this expansion, something happens. Uh, I don't know where this leaves everything else. This is a, this is a big hit to them. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I yeah. hope, I hope it's not as bad as it could possibly be. Uh, neck injuries mm-hmm. are really scary and, you know, Will yeah. Ospreay's had a n- number of them. So mm-hmm. this is not great uh, at all. You know what my, my fantasy is? What? They announce a title tournament. You love tourneys. I love tournaments. Uh, four on four, right? Four, like... I shouldn't say four on four. I should say like uh, 16 dudes. Okay. Right? Double bracket. Okay. Um, Last entrant, Kenny Omega. I would love that. Never happened, but I would love that. Mm -hmm. I like that you have hope for that because it could happen. It could happen. You never know. And this dude has all the belts. And uh, do we have have the, the, the news of him wrestling Andrade? I don't know. It might be in the news, but at some point. Oh, he is wrestling and drive. They have a date for that, right? Yeah, I am yeah. not. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it's added in here. But Kenny Omega is wrestling and for the uh, the sure. AAA Mega Title. Yeah, I, I think sometime in July. Now, I think so. I think that's gonna be cool, man. I think you know what? I'm interested to see how how they do. I, I think it, it'll be a phenomenal match. I think Andrade is just a total stud, but yeah. Interesting. He left WWE. I'm well, just saying. Judging by the match, uh, the match he had with Laredo Kid for that belt, I think he'll work very, very Kenny? well with yeah. Andrade. Yeah. Uh, Backlash was this weekend. We did not do a watch along because I really didn't give a shit about it. Uh, I did yeah. watch it. Eh, you know, non-title match. I guess. I guess we'll go down this very quickly. I okay? was. I was in moaning recovery on Sunday. You were dying, huh? Yeah, my uh, my buddy Alex and his girlfriend came over, and like we we had our first like little barbecue. Nice. And uh, next thing it's next thing it's one in the morning. Oh no! And I'm like on the couch, just all like listening to heavy metal and sloppy. And- oh my god, love it! Uh, United non-title United States champion Sheamus defeated Ricochet in the pre-show triple threat match. Raw Women's Champion <laughs> Rhea Ripley defeated Oscar and Charlotte to retain the title. This was a good match. Fifteen minutes. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad Rhea Ripley retained. Um, also, your your quote unquote nightmare came true with Ray and Dominic winning the tag yeah, team titles. Th- yeah, we'll talk about that too. Uh, August fourteenth for Kenny and cool. Andrade. Cool. I was off by a month. Uh, yeah, Ray Ray and Dominic the first time a uh, I was gonna say a husband and wife tag team this one, but <laughs> that'd be, that'd be cool. <laughs> a boy a boy and his father have become tag team champions. It's amazing how Dominic's been around for like twenty years now. And they, he's twenty. <laughs> they should have they should have announced it as like the boyhood son. The boyhood son is as, alive as they're holding the belts. That's cool, so, man. How long do you see that lasting? I want I want Ray just to, Dominic to turn on Ray and just be like, you little piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and just say kick the crap out of his dad. I really want that to be the story. I wouldn't mind them having like a nice little run with those belts. <laughs> you know, they beat Dolph Ziggler and Baba Rude. Uh, I don't call Baba him Rude. <laughs> call I like Baba that. Rude. Baba Rude. Um, that's what they should they should uh, change his name to. You know what? I got it. Mm-hmm. Middle Eastern gimmick. Just a really, really rude father. <laughs> Baba Rude. I like that. <laughs> Baba, why are you being so rude? Uh, Seventeen minutes. All right, cool match. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about this, please. Yes. <sighs> Lumberjack zombie match with Damian Priest defeating The uh-huh. Miz. Seven minutes on the fucking nose. The Miz tore his ACL during the match. So he's out for mm. numerous months. 
the only question I had is, okay, kayfabe, how do you get the zombies, how do you corral them? How do you get them to leave? <sighs> so these were really sophisticated zombies that followed the rules Tom, of a lumberjack match. They were pretty good lumberjacks, and the makeup was done by, like, Tom Savini's team. Which was, was it awesome. really? Yeah. You know what? I got to tell you, the makeup th- was done really Dude, well. they looked great. The I bits, knew it was Savini. I freaking knew it, too. The bits were great between Miz and Priest, where they, like, they're back-to-back all of a sudden, and they get scared of each other, and they're like, we got to fight these zombies. Say what you will about this, but I'm going to say this. You ready, Andrew? Yeah. And I think you'll agree with me. If we went to an Evolve show Uh and we were pounding $3 Corona cans all night, and then all of a sudden, let's say... uh, Zombies showed up. Let's say it was uh, Punishment Martinez versus Johnny Gargano. Right? Okay. And then the zombies showed up. How nuts would we be for this? Listen, I would... I'd go ape. I'd love it. I'd be like, this is amazing. Like here, here is where like the right time and right place means a lot, mm, right? Mm. Those zombies looked stupid. I thought it was dumb. Uh-huh. The whole gimmick was uh-huh. dumb. Uh-huh. The whole thing. However, if I was in that, if I was in a small environment, a small venue, right? small venue, La-boom. we're in Laboom, we're in Laboom, and there was a lumberjack zombie match. Mm-hmm. I don't care how ridiculous it was. I would pop for it. I would enjoy it. I'd be like, this right. is absurd. It's so weird. I'm into this. But I think that's such a weird thing where people were like, come on, WWE. This is stupid. I mean, I got to tell you, though, it was stupid. I was, mm. I really thought it's stupid. What about the Undertaker? I, I didn't have a. The Undertaker <laughs> never work now. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It can never work now. But I just feel like uh, it was. It, it's tough, right? It's 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 a tough. Well, it's tough for a number of reasons. Okay. One, it was an average. I didn't. I forgot. I missed the whole Batista thing in the beginning. Well, right? because this was a cross promotion with Army of the Dead, and yes. also the other thing that came along with this is like all these dodos were friggin' texting and tweeting Batista like it was his fault. Oh, I know. Everybody, everybody <laughs> was blaming him. Like, but here's the thing. Like, I thought I actually thought this was for a Mattel line of zombie characters. Okay, that's where my mind went. I'm like, oh, this is. I get it. I didn't even see it. I'm like, oh, this is a this is a, a marketing mm-hmm. thing because no mm-hmm. other reason would they do this. Um, was it stupid? Yeah, it was really dumb. Uh, I, it wasn't for me. But looking at it, you're like, okay, you know what? They, they, they look pretty cool. They did something different. Whatever. I, you know what, though? My gauge is kids because that's who this was targeting. Right, right. And I asked all the children that I know because I know many. You do know. You're like the king of the kids. In king a good way. Kids. In a good way. Uh, and... They thought it was dumb. Like, I didn't, none of them were like, oh, that was really cool. However, mm. The Fiend, they're into. Right. So, I, it's interesting. Listen, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know who it's for. I, I'm a, I'm a, I imagine it's for the kids. I imagine it was a corporate sponsor. It was a sponsorship mm. deal. They made some money from this. Uh, unfortunately, Miz got hurt for a stupid, ridiculous Sucks. match. And that's the worst part in this, that it's a, it's a ridiculous match to do, and this guy got hurt. It and was- then they ate him. It was a seven minute match. Yeah. They ate Miz and Morrison. Um, no, this, but not, 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 not Morrison, just Miz. This is, this is also an interesting thing where, like, this is like Miz's first major injury. So, like, God bless the dude for staying healthy for so long. Yeah. You know, uh, and he'll be back. He's probably going to be back better than imagine if he showed up like real, real jacked. Like, a tri- zombie. like Triple be- H returned. I love jack. that. I love that. Um, but I think, you know what? I got a kick out of the zombie stuff, which I feel like is fair to say because it's pro wrestling. I would much rather a zombie lumberjack match than splooshing Baron Corbin with like dog poop. Uh, oh, you know what? I take the zombie over the dog poop. Exactly. Day. Like I would yeah. take the zombie over the, the sliming stuff and the dog poop and like all the other nonsense that they do, you know, uh, women's championship match, smack that women's championship match. Bianca Belair defeated Bailey to retain mm-hmm. the title. 16 minutes for this match. I thought it was fine. It's a good match. Yeah. Okay. Match. Uh, every, by the way, this card was not a bad pay-per-view. And I want to say that, like, I, I came off negative about it. Mm-hmm. This was a very solid show, except for the stupid lumberjack. But every match was great. Every match was fine. <laughs> I, I had no problem with the matches. I thought they put on a good match, all of them. Yeah. And, of course, the uh, triple threat match for the WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley with MVP defeated Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman to retain 14 minutes, 11 seconds. Good for him. Uh, for that. And uh, one more match after that. That was a very good match, by mm-hmm. the way. And the Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman defeated Cesaro to retain the title 27 minutes and 31 seconds. This is one of the longer non-WrestleMania matches that we've had in WWE. I Can somebody... T- I think MG Geek could kind of um, confirm this and or somebody else in the chat. Mm. Is this the longest 
WWE match, like singles match for quite some time. In, in, in quite some time. Yeah. Um, I thought this was match of the night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really yeah. loved it. Dude, Roman's um, phenomenal. Cesaro's great, but Roman is just yeah, remarkable. Yeah. But it's I'm glad they're giving they're giving Roman somebody really, really adept at wrestling to work with. You know? And I think they're polishing each other a little bit. Uh, how did you like the set stuff? Oh, that setup? Uh I I would like to see something different. Two man shield. <laughs> but okay. You know, I think Seth is in limbo right now. He's sitting he's sitting in limbo. I I I was told that they're waiting on something to pull the trigger on his new program. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that is. Maybe a live audience. Uh, NXT on Wednesday, on Tuesday night, I should say, got 700,000 viewers. Uh, Tony Storm defeated Zoe Stark. Jake Atlas defeated Cameron Grimes. Ted DiBiase distracted Grimes. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's going to appear in the <laughs> ring next week with Grimes. <sighs> they're bringing the, uh, the million dollar oh! belt. Okay, fine. I guess he blew it. <laughs> well, that, that, that's kind of been everywhere. No, it hasn't. No, yes, it has. Million dollar belts back. Is it? Yeah. Who who talked about it? I've seen it. I've seen it around. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Can somebody confirm this? Because I could confirm the million dollar belts back, baby. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I was told to wait till Monday. <laughs> Listen, I saw that uh, <laughs> somewhere else. Sorry to the uh, individual that told me this. Uh, but million dollar belts coming back. I don't know for how long, but they're mm. going to have it on TV. People are very excited within WWE about the million dollar belt. Uh, listen, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I know. You know? Well, I mean, I know. you know what's going to happen. I think who knows gonna, what's going to happen? I think, listen, I, this is a, this is a fun thing to bring back these guys. So what may, what, what's the, what do you think is the impetus behind the Cameron Grimes stuff? Because they've always been high on him. There's something very special about him. He's mm. very likable. Okay. Uh, it's a comedy act that's getting over naturally, mm. right? So that's a rarity for them. I don't know how much longevity it has. I don't know how much longevity it would have mm. on the main roster. But to have him as a million-dollar champion or be given the million-dollar belt, not that I know that's exactly what's happening. Right, but right, right, right. I, I think that's – it. it's such a – um. I was told it's like a comparison of like old money versus like that whole Bitcoin money. Like, it's unsophisticated idiots <sighs> becoming millionaires overnight because of uh -huh. cryptocurrency. And the million dollar man represents, like, old wealth, 1980s wealth. 1980s, like, Monopoly man Monopoly wealth. man wealth, yeah. So, uh, I, I think that's the story here with this. It's very interesting how this is, like, the weird rub on NXT, right? Yeah. I kind of want it, like, I feel like DiBiase's always been in their good graces. And he's shown up like for like a month straight too. He's going to be there. He he has a job there. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, let's see. go ahead. Are their ratings plummeting for NXT? Yeah, uh, not great. Seven. I mean, listen, seven hundred thousand is not bad. I think right, right. health wise for the brand because it is a listen. Who's the star of this brand? Like honestly, like look at look at this card. <sighs> It's unrecognizable to most people. And I'm not saying that as a negative, right? I'm saying that as as if you're a casual fan, you're flipping the channels, you put on AEW, you put on WWE, you're going to see names that you recognize. Over here, does anybody know who, who you know, uh, let, let's see, uh, Killian Dane is, Alexander Wolf, you know, even Cameron Grimes. Top dollar. Arya Davari, Tony Nese. I mean, I guess you would know those. I don't even think people know that. Bronson Reed defeated NXT North American champion Johnny Gargano in the cage to win the title. Uh, that, listen, really, I, I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed the sell. However, is that enough to draw more than 700,000 people? I don't know. I don't think so. It's it, You pose a very interesting question, you know, because it seems like whenever we, whenever we talk about NXT for the past year and a half, it's always the same blanket excuse of, well, they're restructuring now. Yeah, which you know, they are. Right, but how long is that going to go, you know? Uh, I well, think I feel like when NXT started on USA, your clear stars were undisputed. The undisputed era. Undisputed era, you had Matt Riddle Balor. there, you had Gargano, you had Ciampa, you mm -hmm. had Balor, right. Keith Lee. Right. Right, right, right. Um, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. There were there were far bigger names on that car on that car. Again, 
NXT, I think, suffers more from having no crowd than Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Yes. Because yeah. when we would watch NXT with a crowd on the network, you were excited to see new people. Yes, right? absolutely. So now, even though a lot, like, the show is good and all these guys are doing very good work, that reaction from the crowd, having, like, those familiar faces in the crowd, like, like the yeah. Bailey lady. You, I, other, I, no, you hit the nail on the head know? here. No, 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 absolutely. Because think about it, right? Um, uh, Fandango getting over, right? Mm. With Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze getting over. That was all fan service. That was all fan reaction. Yeah. Uh, even uh, um, Baron Corbin with the count, right? That that Full Sail did. Yes. Uh, Full Sail kind of created people that you got behind, which I really enjoyed. You are absolutely right. You do need a crowd for that. By the way, submit yeah. your questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, we're going through this. So We got about 20 minutes. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, AEW last night, I believe it was a pre-recorded crowd, right? It, was, it oh, wasn't It was live. Sure. I, I watched it this morning, so I kind of like fast forwarded through. Somebody, like somebody, let me know if it was live because they didn't really show the crowd or anything. But uh, Christian Cage defeated Matt Seidel in the opening match. What did you think of this match? That was fun, you know. Like they, Christian was probably like, "I've worked with you before, so let's do something," you know. Christian was sucking wind though. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, listen, he's forty seven, right? Forty seven years old, still looks good. I got to tell you though, yeah. you know, like he's not. Obviously, he's forty seven years old, but my God, everything he does is correct. Those backbreakers he was doing. Mm. On Matt Seidel, he was working Matt Seidel's back. First of all, he's gigantic. And he was a small guy, Christian. 6'3? He, he was comparatively a small guy at the time. I, I mean, isn't that wild? And you it's put him in this nuts. ring and he's yeah. like towering over everybody. Same thing with, again, same. We go, go through this all the time. Same thing with Mox. Same thing with Cody. In that era where they were there, they were, well, not so much Mox, but definitely like when Cody started Cody, yeah. and when Christian. When Christian was there and Edge were there, they were like the smaller guys, which is nuts to me. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, he looked good, man. You know, I don't, I don't know where they're gonna mm -hmm. go with this. You know, he he's doing these great matches. He looks good. His drop kick is still stellar. Yes, uh, just yes. you could see the difference. And Matt Seidel's a great wrestler. Yes, let me just tell you. But when when you could see the difference between like a really good wrestler mm -hmm. and like a fantastic yes wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Christian is fantastic. Yes. Uh, and I'm not a huge Christian fan. Mm -hmm. Like much like Vince, I just really don't like his face. <laughs> so no, I thought I thought he did great. Um, John Moxie, Eddie Kingston defeated the Acclaim. I loved everything about this match. That's my favorite match uh, of the show. Yes, dude. Sorry. Eddie, best line. Okay, mm. you're dressing like it's 2004, and he said Eddie Kingston looks like a pack of Newports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is accurate this which is, is the funniest fucking thing i've mm. ever heard someone say to insult somebody because you know what eddie kingston does look like he's he's a he's a box of newports i do a carton look like of a newports. box of newports <laughs> i thought that was so funny and john moxie's like yeah he kind of does that was funny and then the line about renee young was with the oral session yeah. and then he's like no i'm talking about her podcast yeah and and moxley just cutting off. Who was it? Was it Max Caster you cut off? No, he cut off. Um, oh, Anthony. Anthony yeah. Bones. Yeah. yeah, he cut him off awesome. in that AEW. It was a... Uh, you know what I love about... This match was awesome. Top real, to bottom. Fun. Great fun. fun ending. You know what I love about watching the Moxley matches? How horny JR gets for him. He really does. <laughs> he he really does. so horny for him. It's awesome. You know, he's like... I, he was like... Uh, what did he call him yesterday? He was like... Uh, this blue-eyed son of a bitch is going to work. <laughs> My God. And it's like, hey, he's coming up like, that's like classic JR, where he's coming up with like really nutty stuff. Are we, are we done? I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Or he's coming up with like really nutty stuff for the, for like just to describe this guy, yeah. you know? And uh, apparently like everybody loves him. Like he's Tony Khan's best friend. Love it. Dude's got a book coming out at the end of the year. <laughs> Yeah, Renee too. Renee has a book, right? She has a cookbook. She's a cookbook. Um, I gotta tell you, man. I this this whole thing. Uh, I thought Caster and uh, Anthony did, and Bones did a great yeah. promo too. That was a really strong promo by them. Uh, the rap was hysterical. Uh, Eddie Kingston, what a change in his life. Oh, my uh, God. this guy's a star. Uh, he's and I. You know what's funny? A lot of people don't get the gimmick, right? But we do. Yeah, because like that's New York. Like, it's a very specific mm. New York, right? Yeah. He, he, uh, Max Caster could have also gone with, you're a walking Timbaland boot. It, 
your, your face looks like a Tim boot. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. I like that. One. Listen, I know a lot of guys over there listen to this. So send them that line. Tell him he looks like a Tim boot. But I did like the 2004. You dress like it's 2004. So yeah, good. he is. He's dressed like he's so 2000. Good. He's in the Woe video. So good. You know? Uh, there was like a backstage bit with Malenko and Jericho. Who sung that? Black Rob? Oh, I don't know. Who sung Woe? Let's see. What's up? Intern Deacon. Intern Deacon's here. He just came in a stare. Yeah, it was Black mad. Rob. I, I was absolutely right. Um, it was good to see Malenko with Jericho. Malenko, yeah, Malenko was there. With, with the, they did a nice little joke where uh, Jericho told, uh, I think, Marvez, like, hey, listen, uh, leave me alone or I'll get the man of a thousand holes on you. And Malenko goes, well, you are you got four more than me. Yeah. And Jericho's like, I forgot a bunch. <laughs> like, such a good, quick little joke. Yeah. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page call out Darby Allen and Sting. Why are these guys dressed like Ricky Starks? Why is everybody dressed like Ricky Starks? <laughs> exactly, right. Good promos out. And uh, yeah, strong, very strong. I, I like the I like how I never honestly never would have thought they were going to use Sting to such an excellent capacity as far as like it's not only Darby but it's Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, yeah. like two guys that they're re- like three three guys that they're really hot on that everybody really enjoys. I got to tell you, Ethan Page, I'm very very hot on. Yeah, I I've been for a long time. There's something very special about him. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, mm. but I have seen it. I've seen him in Evolve. I've saw what he did in, T- in Impact. I keep calling it TNA in my mind. It's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I've become like that old guy that refuses to call like the new streets. You know when they rename a street. Like, or uh, my refusal to call the 59th Street Bridge the Ed Koch Bridge. <laughs> uh, I'll never call. I will call it. I'll call it the 59th Street Bridge. I'll call it the Queensboro Bridge. Mm-hmm. I'm not calling it the, Koch. the Ed Koch Bridge. Yeah. No, I hear you, dude. Ed Koch, the sweetest boy in the world. What if you had a street named after you? The Zarian. Zarian Boulevard Zarian or Zarian Boulevard. Lane? What if they renamed Bell Boulevard Andrew Zarian Boulevard? I, I would have to die tragically. That's the only way that's going to happen. No, or do something like no. really tremendous for the community. Uh, while I get hit by a car. <laughs> like, there's no way they're renaming like, a street. Like, you're handing orphans a sack of a million dollars yeah. as you get hit by as a As I car. get hit by, by, a, by a city sanitation truck. That's the only way they're renaming a street after me. Um, Scorpio Sky, yeah, so this is cool. And we're going to see Sting wrestle in a not... And they were very adamant on letting you know that this is not a, um, a cinematic match. He's actually going to have a match, 62 years old. Sting baited them on the ramp. Darby attacked. Uh, so you've set that up. The Pinnacle cut a promo. Pretty good promo. Uh, Sheeta and Rebel. Terrible match. Mm-hmm. Uh, not good. It was just yuck. I skipped this one. It was bad. It wasn't good. I had to get here on time. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass through that. It was not good. Also, the Tappan Zee Bridge and the Cuomo Bridge. The Mario Cuomo Bridge. I just got that text from my buddy Alex. <laughs> Listen, you're not calling it the Tappan Zee anymore. I, I always forget that you have an Andrew Cuomo action figure. I have an Andrew Cuomo action figure here. <laughs> hey, put your mask on. It's me, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> so silly. Yeah. Uh, it's beyond. Kenny and Don Callis try to talk to Orange Cassidy. Uh, yeah. Try to talk Orange Cassidy out of the world title match at Double or Nothing. I thought that was a funny bit. You know, it just goes to show you, like, Kenny could do everything. I didn't love it. You know? No, didn't love it. Why not? No. Didn't love it. I, lo- I love Kenny and Don Callis. I didn't like Kenny's suit. Oh, come on. It bothered me. Why? Just look ridiculous do you want to be his uh his fashion designer i do yeah what would you dress kenny omega in sweatpants <laughs> just a big like, champion oversight sweatshirt like and mankind. sweatpants yeah, yeah like, make him dress yeah. like me <laughs> cover his face too <laughs> you're hating people's faces today man hating everybody's face uh inner circle responded to uh the pinnacles uh stadium stampede challenge uh of course it's a go you know let's see they're gonna do something different i was told it's not gonna be the same old same old and I'm they cool have to that. do something different because they're in front of a live audience for this one, right? I think this is going to be more of a fight. You know, like I, mm. I liked Hagger's promo and I feel like this is the only Hagger promo I've ever enjoyed. Okay. And Ortiz too. I like, or- like Ortiz. Great. Ortiz yeah. is doing great. Uh, I'm excited to see Santana back in action. Uh, Jade Cargill is coming. She's got a... I think she's going to start a faction. Is that, is that what the promo I was? I feel like... Yeah, that would be cool, you know. Um, you had Serena D beat Red Velvet. Let's talk about this. Great match. Okay, love Red Velvet. Way better than I thought it would be. Yes. Uh, you know, Serena D has been wrestling for God knows how long, so mm-hmm. she's she's solid. But Red Velvet's new, still very new. Uh, you could tell that she's new, but I got to tell you, man, mm-hmm. this was a pretty good match. 
surprised me. I didn't. I had. I did not have high expectations going into it. Not because Red Velvet's not good. It's because you're you're presenting it as you know mm-hmm. for the NWA Women's Championship. Serena Deeb is very well rounded as yeah. a worker. Uh, and and it was a very good match. I'd like to see this again to see how it does. A hundred percent. Um, we also had Anthony Agogo uh beating Austin Gunn. Um. With Cody and uh, Arn, I like where this is going for a go go. I think they're trying to really build this guy yeah. up. You know, like I think, I think all the EVPs are consciously going. Well, this is my project for the next couple of months. You know, like Cody's got Anthony a go go. Yeah. Kenny's working with Pack and um, Orange Cassidy. You know, uh, I think the Bucks just working every tag team you know the bucks working the yeah. varsity blondes and like all the newer guys you know just kind of showing everybody how to work um also like we missed um one little bit where uh, frankie kazarian cut a very heartfelt promo um about like inflicting pain on everybody and talking about his his dad passing away yes you know yeah um what did you think of that match which match young bucks and uh varsity blondes uh i enjoyed it i feel like I feel like you are a bit over the Bucks. Um, I'm not over them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like it's always the same. Every time they're they're in like a major picture, it's the same story. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what this is lead. What this leads to? Do they lose the titles to um, Mox? Or do they, I think so. you think that, that's, yeah. that's where they're going to go with this? Yeah. And apparently, right. uh, I guess they're coming out with Wild Thing from now on. That's a tag tag. That's a tag. But can you imagine the crowd? It's going to sing that sing along with that. It's going to be awesome. I think last week they used the tro- uh, the Trox version. This week they used another version. I hope next week they use like the Tone Loke version. Oh, I want the Tone Loke version. <laughs> uh, all right. So we got 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about Dynamite next week? Do you want to talk about Double or Nothing? Or do you want to do Q&A? Uh, let's go and let's do quick uh dynamite it's on friday mm-hmm. next week due to the nba playoffs cnt championship Miro versus dante martin mm-hmm. hangman page versus joey janela i don't know how long joey janela's staying there mm, uh cody rhodes and anthony ogogo weigh in jade cargill open challenge evil luna with Stu grayson versus scorpio sky and ethan page it's be a good match. uh inner circle celebration of their <laughs> finest moments that's funny uh darby allen versus cesar bonini cesar bonini uh Orange Cassidy response to Kenny Omega, uh, celebration of Sheeta's first and a celebration of Sheeta's first anniversary as women's championship, women's champion, an announcement for the buy in for double or nothing. And then so far for double or nothing, we have Kenny Omega versus Orange Cassidy versus Pac for the AW World Championship, uh, Sheeta versus Britt Aker for the women's championship, Young Bucks versus Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, tag team championship. Cody Rhodes, Anthony Ogogo, Sting, and Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. This will be an in-ring match, not cinematic. Pinnacle versus Inner Circle, Stadium Stampede match, Miro versus Lance Archer, TNT right. title, Casino Battle Royal for a future AW World Championship match. That's a good pay-per-view, man. Yeah, very solid pay-per-view. Guys, submit your questions in the chat room. We will do our best to answer them. This is your chance to uh, to ask away. So let's uh, let's begin. All right. Alan asks, did you guys buy that Undertaker NFT? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why is it? Is it going for like two hundred million dollars right now? Non fungible taker. <laughs> non fungible taker. Uh, John Gorman asks, uh, "Do you main event double or nothing with the inner circle match or Kenny, uh, Pac, and Orange Cassidy?" Uh, I would do Kenny and uh, Pac Orange, right? Because that's a big, that's that's your world title. Yeah. I feel like they're going to take a step back yeah. and it's going to be the inner circle pinnacle. Okay. I yeah. mean, I could do that. Uh, also, Andrew, do you know if the dynamite after double or nothing is full capacity? That's a wonderful question that I don't have an answer to because I haven't even thought of it. Uh, also, this guy's loading up in one good, sentence. Good. Send him uh, on. Is it crazy that Max Caster was part of the awful Bobby Lashley sisters segment from Raw back in 2017? Uh, you know what? I totally forgot about that stupid segment and I forgot that was... Th- I can't believe Bobby Lashley's been there for this long. When did he go back? 2016? No. Yeah. Five no, years. maybe 2017. Yeah, you think so? 
I want to say 2016 when, ah, you know what, early 2017, because uh, his first feud was Sami Zayn, right? First feud with Sami Zayn. It was he returned on April 9th, 2018. Yeah. All right. Um, it's also funny seeing like footage of like a lot of AEW guys as like extras or like backstage talent, especially the MJ- MJF getting shoved into the wall by Samoa Joe. Yeah. Um, Scar Happy asks, do you think uh, the UK or the UAE will get a live WWE event this year or next? Uh, Saudi Arabia, for sure. They're going back to the Saudis. They're going back to Saudi Arabia. That's happening this year. Crazy. Yeah. Where else did he say? UK. I don't think the UK is getting it, but I definitely know that Saudi Arabia is getting it. All right. Um, Mark L. asks, what do you think is the percentage that NJPW is actually considering Kenny for the title? I have no idea. Uh, I would say <laughs> if there was an opportunity that would benefit them business wise, yeah, hell yeah, you want Kenny Omega because he's the big, he's bigger than your, all your top names right now as far as recon, uh, as a recognized person. Well, and eventually he'll have to lose a title. So whoever he loses to will get a lot of uh, publicity for it. They'll get made. Yeah, but it'll be Okada that beats him, or it'll be someone that's already made, which doesn't matter, you know? Um, Well, I think it's good in terms of, like, if they do the caveat of, like, let's put... This is such, such, like, out of left field. This is, like, not even anything. But it would be cool if they were, like, let's put this title back on Kenny, right? With the caveat of, like, he's got to wear it every week on TV. I don't know. I, I don't know where he stands with New Japan. It's mm-hmm. it's weird right yeah. now. You know, like, I think Japan is in, you know, this is a big hit to them with Osprey. And and with everything that's going on over there, too. You, oh, it, it's, you know, the Olympics are happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're having a COVID issue. They're returning back, right? When did they return? This month? A, a couple days. Yeah. With, with, with uh, shows. But I don't know. What if it's Kota Ibushi that takes it off of him if they go that route? I think that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Who will the 21st participant be of the Casino Battle Royale? I don't know. I have no idea. Is anybody's uh, contract like up in time for that? I could probably figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's Can you see. imagine it's Daniel Bryan? Oh, I'd love that. Punk. There's a lot of punk speculation. A lot, yeah. There's a lot of punk speculation, but there always is. It, it's been going on for years. I also so. feel like there's a lot of Rob Van Dam speculation. Where's he going? WWE, probably, because they're doing like an icons thing with him. Oh, are they? Yeah. That boy, that guy, his career would have gone such a different path if he wasn't in that car with Sabu. Ah, oh, dude. I think that goes for like a lot of guys who are like yeah. wrong place, wrong time. That would be a yeah. good episode to do, like wrong place, wrong time, guys. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is NXT Evolve still happening? Do you think they should move out of the Capitol Wrestling Center? Um, NXT Evolve is supposed to still happen. Mm-hmm. I could probably find out when they're planning on doing it. I think I was told what the plan was. I don't remember. Uh, I'll find out. I'll find out for next week. Um, let's see. We have... Uh, Jonzo's uh, editing as we're speaking okay, right now. Okay, sorry. So uh tim anger should rich or myself have something on our and my end of the wrestlemania bet what was the wrestlemania bet i don't i think you were gonna eat something for if what happened i forgot i think you were gonna eat like a shirt or you were gonna let me shoot you with a t-shirt cannon i forget i can't remember what it was (laughs) i forgot so many many of those can i still shoot you with a t-shirt cannon yeah sure (laughs) sure uh Uh, let's see what else do we have here uh johnzo says is this the be- best riches looked since the pandemic? He looks effing beautiful. Also, talk about Dark Side of the Ring collision in Korea is tonight. Thanks, Papa Johnson. Yeah, I'm curious how they're going to tell the story because I've heard... I, I don't believe any of the stories from that thing because mm. everybody carnies you about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I don't... I'm curious how the story is told because really, it's... it's Like, okay, they did a show in Korea that was put on by Inoki. It was North Korea. It was North Korea, yeah. So, a little dangerous. A little dangerous. Uh, but apparently, like, the show was the, that is the record holder of uh, people in attendance. 155,000? 190,000. 190,000. 
So they almost had like yeah, but they had guns to the back of their heads. You know, they so, had to go. So yeah, <laughs> so like, there's a lot of like speculation. I'm really excited to watch that one because like, you know, like the, the teaser that they released was Bischoff doing his Hogan impression. You know, like brother, I don't think I'm gonna make it there because they wanted Hogan a headline. Well, <sighs> and Bischoff was like, well, if you can't get Hogan, who else are you gonna get? And they cut to like Flair, freaking Ric Flair. Well, you know? you know, Muhammad Ali was there, and a bunch of a- other athletes, like yeah. NBA athletes, like a bunch of other athletes were there as ambassadors. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I'm curious because it never got any kind of attention here. Uh, we got time for two more. All right, let's do it. Uh, do you did you notice on Slam Anniversary on the Slam Anniversary teaser that Samoa Joe was shown? Yes. Do you think that means anything? Possibly. Last question, which I think is a, a good way to end the show. Do you think Nick Gage is going to show up on e- AEW anytime soon? No. I think he, I think he I, will. I, I don't know, man. It, it, it's not my style. That's why I don't talk about it. I think, yes, just going by the odds where nobody knew who Eddie Kingston was and we're like, who's this guy? You know, he looks like a pack of Newports. I'll tell you though. And then he outshined every single person he that did, did yeah. that TNT belt and they signed. But him, right? Eddie Kingston is so much better than. Nick I know Gage. it's not our style, yeah. but I do think once they get closer to that GCW date, it's going to happen. I'm curious. Mock gets attacked by a, a, an already bloody Nick Gage. <laughs> already bleeding everywhere with glass. glass Plus, he was, on, uh, he was on the dark side of the ring with the Nick Gage one. Did you watch that? I have yet to watch it. It's good. It's good. I had it. I was like, I was trying to relax like one day last week and my wife was like, I don't want to watch this. This is depressing. <laughs> it's some of them I put on when Jess is around and other ones like she loved the Pillman one. She thought it was such a tragic story. Yeah. Uh, she thought it was done well. But some of the other ones like, I don't know. I, I'm going to watch it. Obviously, I just I, I'm not a I'm not a tremendous fan of the deathmatch stuff like that. Me neither. Like, no, I'm not. I'm talking about the old school deathmatch stuff. I absolutely love like the new stuff. It's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too much gore. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, that's it. Oh, uh, fifth, fifth generation Carney. Any word on NXT Mexico? I don't have any word on NXT Mexico. I have no idea. That's everything. All that expansion stuff internationally is on hold. So, uh, yeah, this looked good. Bronson Reed. I'm looking at this right now. Ending, uh, ending NXT. I have it on right now. All right, guys, that's it for cool. this week. Uh, obviously, throughout the week, we're going to be breaking some more news. Uh, so, uh, follow us. Instagram. Matman Podcast on Instagram, Matman Podcast on Facebook, Matman Podcast on Twitter. BTC Rich for Rich, all things rich. Follow him, Andrew Zarian on Twitter. Also, BTC 2.0, Rich's podcast about comic books. Yes, sir. I'm skipping this week, but next week I'll be back with uh, with an interesting interview that I, I'm, uh, I'm very happy about. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. See you next time. Take care. Later.